days without 3D printing controversy, zero. This is the new Chidi Q1 Pro, their latest 3D printer, and it has a live wall voltage heater element inside of it for chamber heating. Some folks are raising serious concerns about this, and I understand where they're coming from. The previous Chidi printers had a 24 volt heater element. Here I have one outside of the machine. This with the new live wall voltage one, well, that could be pretty concerning power wise. I mean, I'm not gonna let Gene wander into the printer and start messing around with it while the thing is powered on. But there's some context I wanna provide here, my perspective, because I'm kinda of coming to the defense of Chidi on this one, as a lot of folks seem to be running with the information that's been presented, and I wanna break it down a little bit. Inside the rear of this machine is a heater element. It's at the bottom of the chamber. Some folks are raising concern about it being at the bottom of the chamber, where you know tools and bolts and hands might fall too. To my point, it kind of has to be at the bottom of the chamber because that's where the heater is going to be most effective. The top of an enclosed chamber is always going to be the warmest naturally. If you put the heater element at the bottom, it heats up the cool air that's already down there and then creates a natural convection current to keep the chamber temperature equal or more equal across the entire chamber. I'm going to go ahead and remove the chamber heater from this machine so we can see it out on the bench and discuss it a little more. Maybe it's because I come from the world of fabrication and metalworking where I'm used to working around machine tools that have a potential to maim and kill people. I think there's absolutely a discussion here to be had about how much we treat 3D printers like their home appliances versus how much we treat them like the tools that I personally think they really are. A lot of people start raising concerns about the concept of, well, what if a child is poking their fingers inside of there and messing around with things? To that I ask, what if a child pokes their hands in there while the bed's heated to 100 degrees Celsius, or the hot end to 250 degrees Celsius, or the printer is running at 300 millimeters per second movement speeds and it crashes into their little fingers? I'm not saying for a split second we should not be considering and thinking about making machines safer. But I do wonder how much we are looking at safety as a replacement for responsibility when using something. When I unbox this printer, some people raise concern about the fact that the electrical contacts on the power supply are uncovered. To which I had to say, I just had to remove a dozen screws to get the back panel off of this machine to get to those contacts in any way, shape, or form. I am clearly choosing to bypass a cover that was there to get to the point where there isn't a cover. Underneath of the machine is a cover on top of a solid state relay, which is protecting the terminals of the live wall current that control the heater element inside of the machine for chamber heating which does have a clear warning on it about the voltage LN side. The connections on the SSR have eyelets on them, so I have to fully remove the screws to even get the heater element out. Now with everything disconnected and four screws removed from the inside, I can finally remove the heater element. Here's the heater element outside of the machine. It's got a fan on one side that I cannot stick a finger through, and that's not accessible if it's on the back side from its installed position. And then on the front, we've got a fully surrounded housing that surrounds the terminals, which have rubber boots over them, and then grates that I personally can't stick my finger through. Now, I don't have the largest hands, but I also don't have children's hands, so I can understand that point. I just wanna show this to you because I feel like Vector3D, he showed it with the fan off, where you could see the fins very easily accessible. And I feel like quite a few people online have misinterpreted that to mean that the fins were readily open and available for anybody to touch at any point. Again, I don't think that was malicious. I think people may be misunderstood. Or maybe I'm misunderstanding the way that they're looking at it. There is a grate on the front of here and it's got little less than six millimeters, 5.7 millimeters between each of the grate openings on here. And they are 24.3 millimeters wide. Now we're entering into the do not try this at home territory of mad science here, where I'm gonna hook this back up to the SSR and energize the thing. Now I've got this all set up here. I've got it plugged in, it's not powered on yet. I've got the heater element outside of the machine and a voltmeter hooked up, which is connected to a chassis ground on the machine. And then of course, nothing else plugged into it right now. I'm gonna power the machine on and I'm gonna show you that this heater element in my North American configuration here with 110 volts is not live and active just sitting here. It has no voltage going through it, just sitting here with nothing happening right now. It is just inert. 
currently until the SSR sends power to it. Again, I am bypassing multiple safety considerations to get to this point. This is a do it my own risk situation. I've got live voltage right here. I'm making sure the cat is away from me. There are no children here. I don't have children. And I'm going to demonstrate what happens. Now, I already showed it doesn't have power when it's not heating. I'm gonna start using the chamber heater. I'm gonna send power to it. 55 degrees Celsius target temperature. Now it is actively heating. The fan on it is spinning as it's commanded to do. And if I probe the heat sink on it, I now have line voltage traveling through it because it is a line voltage heater element. And this is where the concern comes in. I understand that. I'm gonna kill the heating here because it's outside of the chamber. The thermistor is inside of there. So this would just indefinitely heat up. Again, putting it into a failure state that was never intended. I can fully see why people are concerned about that. You've got line voltage going through that thing. Somebody arguably could stick a screwdriver in there. They could stick a scraper in there. The bed on the machine could be stuck into there. Though I've attempted that, and I'll show you in a second, I wasn't actually able to make that happen. The factory grill actually does a surprisingly good job of preventing this PEI sheet from going into the fins of the heater element. So this could be a situation where your bed sheet would conduct the electricity to your hand, but at least on my unit, I'm not actually able to get it to contact the fins of the heater element. It hits the grate on the fan grill or the back edge of the machine before it can turn enough to get in there. To me, there's a big factor with all of those concerns though. If you are messing around inside of a printer, you should turn it off and unplug it from the wall. This isn't gonna do a darn thing to me now, no matter what state it's in. There's another consideration here. This thing, I'm holding it right now. It's pretty toasty in my hand because it is a heater element. So if I used a 24 volt version of this and I stuck my finger through the grate and touched the heat sink on it, I would expect to get burned. Not shocked, but burned. While I have this out, I'm gonna grab it real quick, head over to the computer and design up an add-on grate that will go on the face of this thing and add further protection to prevent fingers, hands, whatever, from getting into this heater element. I had to measure manually off of the heater element. That's why I pulled it out of here so I could design this grate up. I got it designed. And of course, it's the best of gons now with hexagons on it. With the part designed, I was able to send it off to print on my Bamboo X1 using Bamboo Labs PAHTCF filament. So carbon fiber nylon with their higher temperature formula. It supposedly can handle up to this much temperature. The part design printed just fine, except for the fact that I really needed to dry this filament. It's been around my studio since I got the Bamboo X1 almost two years ago now. A quick side note, I am going to release this design file. There'll be a link in the description to a free download on my Thangs page for it. Print at your own risk. I cannot guarantee whatever filament you use placed directly in front of a heater element may not be a fire hazard in and of itself. That is something you are going to have to determine for yourself. I used the carbon fiber nylon because of its high temperature handling capabilities, and I believe it should retain its shape in front of this heater element quite well. I really wouldn't recommend anything less than this or maybe a rated material if you have a, a flame retardant material like something like Prusament has. Assembling this is going to be really straightforward. I designed it to fit over the face of the original grate. Now you have the hexagons on there, which are going to make it much more difficult for anything to get to the heater element. You also have the original grate still behind there. So even if something gets through the hex, it still has to get through that to get to the elements inside of here. It wraps around the outside a little bit and has a little bump out to protect the terminals on the side as well. Let's go ahead and get this installed back into the machine and get it fired up. Now we are going to reuse the original mounting screws and the larger standoffs that it has, but there's also a smaller two millimeter plastic washer that went with this assembly. We are not going to reuse those. The new grate replaces those. So it takes the place of that spacer with the bolt going through the grate, then going through the heater, through the standoffs, and then mounting into the machine. We do have to be careful while threading the screws into here as they are just regular M3 screws threading into plastic bosses. It'd be very easy to strip the threads out on this and then that's not so great. I really wish there were some heat press inserts in there or that the screws they used were the thread forming kind meant to thread into plastic more so. That's really the installation of my design for the grate that goes over the front of this heater element. 
you will really have to try to stick something in there now. The screwdriver can get in, but again, if you're working inside of here with a screwdriver on this machine, you should be powering it down anyway. To me, you only use that heater element when the print is ready to get going. You're not gonna be cleaning your bed off, you're not gonna be wiping it down or any of that because you're trying to contain the heat inside of a chamber and warm up the chamber. Otherwise, why would the heater element be on? So you should have no reason to get anywhere near that thing while it's energized. That said, there has been some notation that some of the European outlets, I don't know what the name for them is, can be flip-flopped in plugging them in. And in doing so, live and neutral will be on different legs than they are tested to be with with this machine. So the European spec machines can actually have current flowing through that at any time. I don't fully understand how this makes sense because the SSR shouldn't be sending power, but I don't have one of those machines to check out for myself and say. I'm an American, I've got an American machine and our plugs are keyed in a way that I can only plug it in one way and it has no issue operating the way that Chidi intends it to in my testing. I'm going to drop a link in the description in the comments to some of the Twitter threads that have been going on around this so you can see a little more of the background and get a perspective from some folks who are outside of the US testing this machine. As well, I'm also going to link to Adam Vector 3D's channel you can go check out. He disassembled this machine and was, to my knowledge, the first person to discover the way this all operates and that we had a mains voltage heater in here. Now, don't just take my perspective on this. Go to those links, check it out, get your own information on this, and decide whether or not this machine is for you at all. This thing is fast, and I'm so far seeing pretty darn good print quality out of it. It's got the active chamber heating in here, and it's less than 500 bucks at the early bird pricing right now. So, to me, this could be a really interesting machine for somebody wanting to do a little bit more engineering type work with their 3D printing. Honestly, the thing I like the least about the way this whole thing is put together is the wiring length and the way it's routed inside of this machine. The heater wires coming off of that heater element are just a little bit shorter than I wish they were so they can be neatly routed. They kind of just run around the frame and then through a hole that was very clearly once intended to be a motor mount, like this was supposed to have a single Z motor, but they went to dual Z motors on it instead. A bunch of the wires are actually run through that one motor mount hole and there's no gasket or grommet around there. It's not a sharp opening. I can run my finger across it without worrying about cutting me, but I don't necessarily love this for all these wires just kind of being run through there without any anti-chafe material. Quite a few folks have asked why did they move away from the 24 volt heater to the mains voltage heater that's in here. It would eliminate the concerns that at least a lot of people seem to have. I have a pretty good idea about this. Pure speculation on my part though. The 24 volt heater says anyway that it pulls 300 watts and that would require a full second power supply. The Chidi X-Max did have two power supplies for this reason. This machine trying to package and put a second power supply in it, it is much smaller than the X-Max 3. Having the added cost of a second power supply and the associated wiring added to the bill of materials would drive the price up. Those two things combined to the choice to go with an SSR and a mains voltage heater instead. Was price worth the safety trade-off in the mind of Chidi? Probably? In the, your mind? What do you think? I feel like I've come off a little bit too on the defensive for Chidi Tech. To me, I don't see this as a particularly big issue for my uses and my use cases. But I also am not viewing 3D printers as appliances as I feel like a lot of folks are starting to get to and arguably a lot of marketing by 3D printer companies is presenting them as. And that is a whole different discussion. Let me know in the comments whether or not you think that my perspective on that is skewed or wrong, or you have other input on this issue right here that you think I missed or you wanna discuss deeper. With that, I think we're ready to wrap it up for this one, folks. This is a little bit different type of video than I usually would do, and what I think I'm gonna start doing more of on here, the Mandic Labs channel, where we'll just dive into a topic, mess around with it, make a little more slapdash video, just kind of thrown together in a way that I usually wouldn't do with Mandic really, and see what we can get out of these projects and machines. Let me know in the comments whether or not that's something you'd be interested in seeing more of. All right, folks, that's it for this one. Get subscribed to ensure your 3D prints don't fail. It's not a guarantee, but it can't hurt. See ya.